Sanskrit movement. I can you know, elaborate on that is about the multiculturalism to bring. I think again it back starts with home. I think we should, uh, first of all, superstitiousness should be not there. Um, in home, we should engage when, when kids and children are in school, we should have at least, instead of one country flag or two, we should be all country flags in that. We should encourage them to participate in all culturalism events. We should have all kind of pictures and artwork and posters and flags probably, so that all world is like a one, it's a one home. We, we are global citizen here. And we should engage and encourage our kids, children especially, where do we participate in all kind of culturalism events. It's just not Indian or Canadian, Canada Day. Or we should let them enjoy the all diversity of the other culturalism to, to understand different country, different language. And we should not build a barrier in, in childhood because once we give them freedom to grow in a different culture, they, that's the basic root actually, it starts from beginning. If we stop that and by the time they are too old, then it's too hard to mold them and shape them. And allowing them to participate and also go and do volunteer work also. So that they understand when, when they become parents and all that they can teach the same way and bring the revolutionized, revolutionary in, in the new world for the culturalism and all. And I think we are very really fortunate and lucky enough in Canada that it's a we have a freedom of write and speak and everything in this country, it's a multiculturalism country. We have all the privilege and honor to do any kind of event. And we should also encourage other our, our community people to also set up an event for and participate in that too. Um, on the other hand, government has given a lot of rights to also create an event to bring people from a different kind of world. So we can also engage and empower, especially young people. We actually, young people plays a big role because what, wherever we are adult, we are already done. We need to empower youth and women. I think that's the basic root. We, instead of thinking about the fruits, we need to count the, the roots. The youth and women is the root of whole, the coming generation and generation. If we empower youth and women, I think everything will fall in place. And we are all here highly educated people. We just need encouragement from each other and not being superstitious and allowing every culture and country to mix and mingle and live like a parents and brothers and family and not stopping to elaborate and explore different culturalism too. And we have seen a lot of time we say like, oh, what we have to do with that event? That's not related to our country or our country. So we are actually cutting that whole route so kids get fear because they have their opinion and then they say, okay, our parents say we are not allowed to go there too. So we are stopping them and then that the root is like the whole dream and the whole inspiration is killed. And next time when they go to the school and college and they don't engage in that because the parent has stopped them. So it starts from again at home and, and once in a month, or once in a couple of weeks, we should engage in multiculturalism. We should find uh, thousands of books out there, thousands of courses there, put them into arts, communication, then in different events where they can elaborate and bring multiculturalism in that too. And I think it's a good way to start. I think we need more focus on youth first, which is the coming generation and generation. We need to fix that root part first. And I think we, we all have the ability to do that. We encourage everybody to just give their whatever the best they can do and not stopping kids' dream. To, that you cannot do this. That is the biggest thing we can kill their self-esteem down. We should put our kids' self-esteem self really up. And most of their parents are very intelligent out there. They just need a little push to push them in a different language and multiculturalism, which will really help. And uh, I think that's what I can say. That's really okay, great answers, everybody. Um, we've talked a lot about the community what can we do on an individual basis, our government. I'm wondering about the role that we as Canadians can play, men and women, uh, for gender imbalance issues around the world. Um, we've seen a lot of really great um, local people doing some amazing things in, in, in Pakistan, India. Um, maybe there's an example you guys could give, or maybe there's some sort of an idea that you guys can put out there. And then after this question, we are going to open it up to the audience if anybody has a question. 
That's a brilliant question, and I think I'm not well educated enough to answer on that, but I got, according to research and study which I have seen in India, Pakistan, Brazil, Nepal, these are the top list countries where women are illiterate and they are in the labor force. Over 93% that women are actually out of labor force and uh, facing the financial difficulties because they are not in school and all. And they've been forced to do work and they have been worried and stressed about their financial uh, security and all. So again, schooling and empowerment is again is a, it's a backbone, it's a root of all the the causes which is creating the gender violence and all. If, if again, you woman has been empowered, the the whole thing will be corrected by itself because she can. She's the powerful. She's the finance minister and the home minister as well to empower her kids to lead to the better generation. And they can, the kids can generate and they can follow the same step routes and all. So we should come together all just um, and participate in that way that we can bring awareness. And awareness today we live in the social media area that we can spread out the world in a positive way to empower those people around in that country especially to bring them into light so that they cannot suffer and suffocate and they cannot raise their voice. And we have a lot of tools, we have a lot of funds, we have a lot of intelligent people and sources out there in that country. It's a matter of time how much we time we devote in that to for empowerment for the world. It's just not about my kid, my family, and my community. It's all about the global thing. If we even think about a minute in our day, I think we achieved that goal too. But it's about a matter of time that how much we seriously think about that. Or we just too selfish to think about my family. This time is very part. Or the global cause is also part. And I think we should encourage our kids to also to focus on that area too. Empowering our kids for global citizenship is the most important thing we can give, empower them rather than thinking about, not only for themselves, which is a good point, but about thinking about the global cause. And that's one of my reasons my passion was in childhood and my company name is Guru Global Consultant. And I achieved that goal that I'm still learning. What I've learned in this in my life is I'm still learning here. But I'm very proud that I have created and empowered more than tens of thousands of young people around the world and made hundreds and thousands of young ambassadors around the world. And I think I'm leading towards that. I'm not talking towards sales stocks at all, but I think if me as a person who can be a homeless and come from nowhere, and I can do that. We all educated people here are more powerful, and I think you know the best answer there. Thank you.